Hi everyone, Nick Make mail number 31, 32 I think. Uh, I've got three packages and a couple of other things to look at. Let's get into it. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that was a great intro, wasn't it? So unfortunately the whole video had this really annoying noise. So, time to crack out the old voiceover. So, which package should I open first? Hmm, this one looks good. So I ordered a bunch of LCD screens, so those sort of round circular ones you can get for watches. So these ones are based on the ST7789 uh, interface, which is pretty common. Uh, the only issue though is that I have to find a little plug for that. Uh, which might be a little bit difficult since they're surface mount devices. If you saw my previous mailbag, um, I'm trying to make an LED uh, eyeball essentially. So I've got these um, cabochons uh, which will extend the eyeball out. Uh, then I started sort of mumbling something I couldn't really hear and waving my hands around and doing something. Oh, okay, so we're on to the next one. Excellent! Yay, another JLC PCB order. Excellent. So these are actually the next revision of my Pi projector. Uh, these are the 2.0 boards. So the uh, previous version uh, differs slightly from version 2.0. Uh, for example, I've got the micro USB power connector there. And I've also placed an I2C based GPIO expander, which gives an additional eight uh, GPIOs which is quite good because all the GPIOs are taken up on the Raspberry Pi and was one of the issues that I had with it. But in Rev 2.0, I've added some substantial changes. Uh, for example, I've added in LiPo charging capabilities uh, with the standard JST connector there. I've switched over to using a standard DC jack instead of micro USB. Uh, also using four GPOs from the ITC expander which can monitor things like uh, whether you've got uh, DC power coming in, uh, the state of the LiPo, whether it's charging, whether it's not, um, and also the voltage levels as well, which is pretty good. So all I have to do is build them up and test them, make sure the design works. And of course I'll still make available the Rev1 boards as a plain uh, adapter board. Uh, which will be the cheaper version and the uh, other one which will be the more expensive version and I'll sell them either as a kit uh, with all the components supplied or a fully built and tested board. Unfortunately uh, the last batch of 30 Rev 1.1 boards have all been sold on Tindy. However I've ordered another batch of 75 from JLC PCB and they should be ready in a couple of days. So on to the next one. So this is uh, something that's a Kickstarter and I've got one of the early prototypes which is the Pearl Charger. I've seen a lot of YouTube video reviews on this uh, so the fellow is doing some fairly decent uh, marketing. So this is essentially a charger with uh, four 2.7 amp charging ports but the really good thing about this is it's got four independent DC buck converters which will charge the four ports independently. And one of the really good things is that the DC input voltage is from 7 to 17 volts. So of course you can charge it from solar panel or whatever you want. The nominal output voltage is 5.05 volts. But if it's under heavy load then it will increase that to 5.2 volts. They also claim to have lots of protection like over voltage, over current, over temperature, over everything. And the whole unit runs off a 15 volt 4 amp power pack which is a pretty beefy little thing. Okay, time to do a bit of testing. At least that's what I thought I heard I said. It was a little bit noisy. So this is a fairly old uh, Pi. I think it's probably a Pi 2. Um, but, you know, I managed to play a video on it without any problems. Of course, you know, it works as expected. But, you know, it's only drawing 5.7 watts. So let's add a few more pies on and see how much it draws. But before I do that, let's check out the short circuit protection, which is supposed to be pretty good. This is my handy short circuit protection tool. 
that was actually pretty decent. Uh, if the audio wasn't so bad on the recording, you'd be able to hear a, a little buzz and of course the pleasant sound of small voltage arcs. But you know what? It's actually pretty stable. You can see the uh, wattage increase every so often, but the Pi is completely unaffected. So let's move on to some Pi 3B pluses and see if we can uh, push the load up a little bit. So adding the extra four pies increased the uh, wattage consumption to around about 8, 8.3 watts. So the best way to increase the power consumption is to run something like the small PT test from the Ferrix test suite, uh, which should actually increase the current draw. Um, and let's see what the results are like. So the wattage increased to 22 watts, uh, which is pretty decent. But the question is, is this actually accurate or not? Now there's a way of testing this. So this time I added an inline power meter which logs both voltage and current and will allow me to produce some nice pretty graphs. So I ran the small PT test from the Forex test suite and I ended up seeing around 24 or 25 watts which is around about right because I think uh, the internal circuitry on the Pearl charger will be using around about 2 to 3 watts. And well, you know, the results, it's a fairly consistent uh, result. You can see the point where I started the Phronix test suite, which uh, pushed the current draw right up, uh, then dropped back right down again. Unfortunately, I don't have a thermal camera with me, but I saw a maximum of around about 26.2 degrees Celsius on the front, and on the rear side, roughly about 28 degrees Celsius which is actually a pretty decent temperature considering I'm pulling 1.6 amps from 15 volts. So going back to the single Pi, um, I connected up the power logger to the Pearl and I wanted to see if there's any impact on shorting out one of the DC buck converters. Now that's actually pretty good. You can see the uh, DC buck converter pulling a large amount of current for a very brief amount of time and then dropping back down again. So it's actually doing the job. Oh, finally. So this is where I actually suddenly discovered that my audio was so bad and I managed to fix it. Oh, no more of this. So this time I've connected the USB logger in series with uh, the Pearl charger. So I'll be able to see if uh, any disruption on the other USB ports actually cause a disruption on other ports. So let's give it a whirl. Okay, so I've uh, powered it all up, started playing a video, and uh, let's see what happens. Look, you can even drive a, a little motor with it uh, without any problems. At zero revolutions, a small DC brushless motor is at, at its uh, peak current consumption, 4.8 watts. So, I think uh, enough mucking around with it. Let's uh, crack it open and see what it looks like on the inside. That's a pretty neat little unit. Oh yeah, it's a 3D printed case uh, as well. As expected, there's four individual uh, DC buck converters. So the voltage uh, looks like it comes straight in from the DC jack uh, all the way into each of the uh, DC buck converters. So that's quite a nice little uh, unit. I don't really have any ideas after, after that. <laughs> You know, J-Man needs a sidekick. How about this? J-Man and Cap are down at the docks having an intense battle. Yeah. It's looking like J-Man may have just met his match. Yeah. And just as J-Man is about to lose, Whiffy Boy turns up. <laughs> Whiffy Boy? <laughs> yeah, you know, J-Man's sidekick. So what's his superpower? Well, he has the power of wireless transmission. Don't you mean Wi-Fi? No, Whiffy. Oh, hey. Hey, J-Man. Then J-Man says, Thanks, Whiffy Boy. Help me take Cap to justice. Then Whiffy Boy says, 
Sure thing, J-Man. And then throws one of his whiffy meters at Cap, but it has no effect on him. So let me guess, he then throws a whiffy sock at him, which knocks him out cold. A sock? What do you mean a sock? Well, he is whiffy boy. He must have a sock that's whiffy. I mean, otherwise, why would he be called whiffy boy? Okay, so my uh, son went dumpster diving uh, a while ago and picked up a whole lot of these things. So these are RGB LED panels. So the LEDs don't have uh, red, green, blue inside each one. It's just individual red, individual green, and individual blue uh, LEDs. Uh, so this is straight panel uh, and round panel. And really, they are throwing out a lot of these things. They're quite bright, so if I just connect up um, some of them, they're pretty bright. So you can see that you've either got uh, blue, green or red are currently drawing about 700 milliamps and the circular ones are pretty much the same uh, you've got blue you've got green you've got red so it's actually quite bright with all of them uh, and all of them powered on it's drawing about 1.3 amps there you go what actually makes this a, a really good dumpster dive is exactly how much I managed to get If anyone can think of what to do with probably a couple of thousand LEDs of red, green and blue, just leave a comment on below and uh, let me know. I just can't think of anything at the moment to do with these. Um, they're pretty decent LEDs, they're pretty bright, 12 volt LEDs and uh, I just don't know what to do with them. And the other thing that's really cool is uh, my son managed to pick up these, which are really cool. So. Can anyone guess what they are? Well, they're actually a variable potentiometer, but they also have a motor on it. So they're actually motorized sliders. So the idea is that um, you can adjust it to whatever level you want um, and controlled by software, um, you can actually readjust it. So you would have seen them on mixing desks. They press a button and they all reset to a certain level. This is absolutely cool and there's a whole bunch of them. So, I don't know what I'm going to make out of it, uh, but more than likely I'll be um, uh, using them for video editing uh, because the interface with my software, often it'll reset to a certain value, so I want to be able to do that. Uh, if I adjust the slider and I restart the software, I want to be able to just reposition it to a known point. We've got a whole lot of other cables running off here, I'm not sure why there's so many. The way I would know the position is basically where the the potentiometer ends up being. Of course the resistance will change but um, I'm not sure why they have so many connections. I might have to crack this open and have a look at it. From what I can see there's actually several different resistors. We've got power and ground and we've got three uh, different resistance points I think. So I'm just going to measure the uh, resistance and see what pinouts these are. So if I move that up, okay, so it's a 5, five kilo ohm pot, uh, the minimum is 34 ohms. And it seems to be fairly accurate too, there's probably about a 10 ohm accuracy. Okay, so it looks like uh, there's two channels. Uh, which sort of makes sense because most uh, mixing desks are stereo, I think. Uh, if you've got um, a stereo input, uh, that which is 7266 ohms, and this which should be the same. Uh, slightly off, I'm not sure what the white does. Now unfortunately there's not a heck of a lot of detail on um, these little motors. Um, so I've set my bench power supply to 3 volts with a current limit of 500 milliamps. Uh, we'll see what happens. That is absolutely perfect. So let me just reduce the current down a little bit, down to maybe 100 milliamps. So even 100 milliamps is uh, pretty decent. Uh, to be honest, I probably wouldn't drive it with much more than 100 milliamps. I'm just thinking about the feedback. That's about the most you probably want. You don't want to have the uh, cable potentially breaking with too much current so that's a pretty good test I might try dropping it down to let's try 50 milliamp 
50 is just a little bit too low. 70 is a bit low. 80 is a little bit, a little bit low. Okay, so the minimum I can get away with is 90 millions. But on the safe side, 100. So that's really good. Um, 100 milliamps, three volts. I could quite easily drive it uh, using a simple BSS 138, which they're cheap as chips. Um, this is great. I am looking forward to this. Uh, once again, if you've got any ideas of what I can do, I know I've got I've got plenty of ideas, but if you've got any ideas, uh, let me know in the comments below. Uh, I think that's about it uh, for this week's mailbag. I don't think I have anything else. So thanks for watching and see you next week. No, intense, Daniel, not funny. Daniel. Hey, Jaman. Thanks, Ricky boy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, hi, <laughs> Jaman. <laughs> I mean, things are going to throw it. Oh, sorry.